Hello and welcome to my old Pentium machine. It's got a Pentium 3 clocked to 933 megahertz and 512 megabytes of RAM. I just want to show you guys quickly what you can actually do with these machines. So as you can see here, I'm just going to launch a few games like Cave Story. Now, obviously Cave Story on Windows 98 is not that surprising, but as you can see the audio drivers and everything work well. And it is a very smooth running game. <clears throat> Now on this machine I had to fully upgrade to 512 megs of RAM because later on I do stuff in Linux as well. But for most retro gaming needs, upgrading to this Pentium, it originally had a Pentium 3 at 733 megahertz, but upgrading it to the 933 megahertz one vastly increased what I could actually do with the machine. It is so much faster now. It's kind of unbelievable. Now this is in no way the fastest Pentium 3, I know there's like Turion ones or something, I don't remember their name, but they got to like 1.6 GHz or something, and this is not that. But, by upgrading the CPU, I can run a 10 to 64 emulation on Windows 98 at full speed, with very little slowdown. It does occur here and there. Now obviously here I'm just playing Super Mario 64, using Project 64. And as most people will know, that do a lot of emulating, Super Mario 64 is one of the easier games to emulate. There's plenty of other heavy hitter N64 games out there that are much, much harder to emulate. And later on here I do emulate Star Fox 64, and that actually does run perfectly fine. But as you can see here, this is a perfectly playable experience. I'm not getting any type of lag or skipping or anything. It's actually pretty cool. Here's the Star Fox. I'm crashed! Blech. But anyway, as you can see, Star Fox 64 also runs no problem full speed. This one's a little bit harder to run than Super Mario 64, so I just want to show an example of it actually playing the Pentium 933, strut its stuff, and show its power. On the same vein, here's PlayStation 1. Uh, this is Barman Fantasy Race. It's not a super well-known title, but everyone wanted a piece of that Mario Kart pie, so everyone's making racers, except this time you're racing on the kangaroo creature things. I don't remember what they're called, but unsurprisingly, PlayStation games run 100% full speed using a PSXE or whatever emulator. A lot of this, some of these emulators, I had to set up a kernel EX to even get this stuff to run, but once it's running, it runs, and I have absolutely no problems. Off screen, I'm playing with an actual PS1 controller. I have an adapter that actually works with Windows 98, so it really shocked me. And in the subject of emulation, the good thing about Windows 98 is you can pretty much run most DOS games, no problem. Here's Star Wars Dark Forces. This is kind of like, for a lot of people, what Doom would have been growing up playing this game on my old machines. I could have showed off games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and StarCraft 2 and Civilization 2 and so on, obviously, but... <laughs> we've all seen that running on old Pentium machines a thousand times by this point. Now, really pushing things up a bit here, I wanted to see more demanding 3D titles, so here's Richard Burns Rally. I am not very good at it, but it does work with the PlayStation controller, surprisingly. Now, one of my friends is much more into this game, and he's much better than I could ever be. As you can see, I'm everywhere except on the road, usually, but it's enjoyable. I have been having some fun playing it. I'm more of a Gran Turismo 2 kind of guy that I've been playing through, not Rally, but it's fun. Now this one surprised me how well it runs. Halo actually runs just fine on a Pentium 3 machine. It shocked me, honestly. 
Now, I did upgrade the GPU. I have a uh, ATI, like, 9550 or something like that. And the reason I upgraded to that card was because it has modern Linux support as well as Windows 98 support. It took a lot longer than I'd care to admit to find a GPU that worked great on Linux and old Windows uh, installations like 98. So, but as you can see, it runs. It's It's got a lot of hitching and the frame rate is not always stable. Grenades and so on can really tank the FPS for a second. And loading and saving zones can really slow down things, too. So we have to forgive the flicker issue here. I don't know what refresh rate Linux keeps reporting because it's definitely not 60 and I could not get my shutter speed to match it. But here's just some general web browsing in Linux using Antics Linux. <clears throat> now this is using Pale Moon, a Forka Pale Moon, which is a Forka Firefox that gives you better processor support for old processors. This doesn't have the SSE2 instruction set, so a lot of modern software just cannot run on this system. But as you can see, browsing old Reddit and so on is perfectly smooth. Um, but watching stuff like YouTube's not really possible in the browser, but as you can see here, it takes a long time to load the actual videos to start. But there's an application that comes with Antics that you can install on any Linux distribution as far as I'm concerned. Is uh, SM, it's SMTube, I believe. And it's basically a, YouTube player that lets you watch YouTube videos using an external player such as VLC player which I set it up to run. Now it takes a while to actually load the video but once it's loaded it can play YouTube videos at 30, uh, 360p and 480p with a no frame drop. It's actually pretty incredible. It shows that if things have proper hardware acceleration especially with that video card in there. This system is quite capable but of course nowadays Things are getting more and more bloated, and systems like this are going to be much and much harder to support. As you can see, scrubbing it going quickly through the video once it's loaded it will actually work. Now this was the hardest thing to get running. This is Minecraft 1.7.10 and I'm connected to a local server on my LAN so that I wouldn't have to so I could offload a little bit of the processing to another CPU. I've set up Optifine with Forge on this installation so it was even playable. I wanted to run more modern Minecraft, but 32-bit binaries for Java are kind of hard to build for. So I kind of got stuck on Java 8. Maybe with more time we could get more progress, but as you can see, if you're a fan of mining and not so much running around everywhere, it's, it's a relatively smooth experience. It's nothing incredible. But the fact that it's actually running at all just kind of surprised me.